Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and welcome. My name is Shaina And I'm Fatima Anti. And we are here today to talk to you about the daily du'as in Ramadan. So I hope you all have your book. Um, Fatima Anti and I, we have been working on this for the last year, and we're really excited to share it with you. But with your age group, we are going to push you a little bit further. So as well as this book, we suggest you have a notepad and a pen so that you can make extra notes because we won't necessarily be going through every question. We might just focus on a few questions and develop that in depth. Um, and firstly, of course, congratulations on the beginning of the month of Ramadan. So shall we begin, Fatima? Mm -hmm. We pray that this month, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying we just pray that this month brings us all the barakah and the opportunity to complete the fast, inshallah. Inshallah, absolutely. So Fatmanti, why are we looking at the du'as of the month of Ramadan? So the whole idea is that um, although we are so familiar with the du'as, alhamdulillah, right now, um, the idea is to go a little bit deeper and to be able to understand what we're saying because there is no benefit as much as benefit there is if we actually know what we're saying. And often it's better even to just recite some of the du'as or maybe pick one or two for each night, but to really know what we're reciting and take time to think about what we're, what we're reciting. So definitely quality as opposed to quantity and definitely with meaning and with kind of concentration and focus rather than just lip reading. Yes, absolutely. So let's begin. The first du'a that we're going to look at mm -hmm. is the first short du'a of Ya Ali Ya Azim. So it's the first one in the book. And we are going to look at the very first question, which is that there are seven names of Allah mentioned in this du'a. Which ones are they? But now we're also going to look at, well, why do we say these names and why in this month? What is it about these names that is important enough for us to be saying them and this is, these du'as we recite after every wajib salah as well. So we're repeating these names. So the first name. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, actually, let's yeah. look at names of Allah in general, right? Should we go through the ones that are there first? So quickly skip through, yeah. the, skim through the ones that we have, the seven that we have. Yeah. Yeah. So we have Ya Aliyu, and then Ya Adim, and then Ya, ya Ghafur, and Ya Rahim. And then we have um, Antha Rabbul Adim, so Rab, Rabbul Adim. And then if we go down a little, we have Samir Al Basir. Yes, does that make it seven? Yeah. Seven. Yeah? yeah. Okay, so we're going to start with Ya Ali, you and Ya Adim, right? But first, Fatman, mm -hmm. why do we say the names? So there's usually two reasons that have been given that we give, we use mm -hmm. the names of Allah. And the first mm -hmm. one is we usually say the names of Allah to fill a need. So for example, I'm sure whenever you've been sick, your mother has, you know, come to you, rubbed your back and said, Ya Shafi, Ya Shafi, invoking Allah's name of the healer to cure you. Um, another time, for example, let's say if you're studying for an exam, you might use the word, the name of Allah, Ya Alim, the all-knowing, so that we, in, we try and get a little bit of that knowledge. Allah helps us attain that knowledge. But the second reason is really important. The second reason is to praise. But what's the literal meaning of hamd and praise of Fatimati? So I think here we can say is that the whole essence of repeating his name is that we, not only do we get to know his names, but the idea is to then be able to manifest and implement his names in our life. So hopefully, Shainanti, as we go through the seven names, we can kind of point out and allude to how we can manifest and sort of be representatives of his names here in our lives. Yeah. And the yeah. literal meaning of hum and praise is to manifest these attributes of perfection because we all have mm -hmm. Allah's spirit that was mm -hmm. found within us. We all have the capability of yeah. manifesting a little bit at least of these. So, Ya Ali. Now, Ya Ali, we normally uh, translate as the all high, but this actually means mm -hmm. the highest of all things. And this highness is not in distance as such. You know, we tend to look up when we talk about Allah. It's not about that. It's not about where he is, but it's actually about the station of Allah. And it basically means that Allah is free of all deficiency. Okay. So just going back to the point about how you're saying that he's 
um, spiritually higher than us. Yeah. But on the other hand, we have this a, lo a lot of this um, importance of how Allah is actually very close to us. So you, it's kind of juxtaposing the two. So, you know, we have that um, Allah is closer to us than our jugular vein in the Quran. We have the story of Prophet Musa when Prophet Musa asks Allah, you know, are you very far that I call out to you or are you very near that I whisper to you? And actually Allah says, I am sitting right beside the person who prays to me. Mm -hmm. So although Al Ali is he's very high and spiritually higher and elevated and far away from us that way, but we know that he is also very, very close to us. So I think that's a lovely um, contrast there. Yeah. And when we want to practically yeah. manifest this, we actually have to try and improve our spiritual elevation mm -hmm. as well. So when we are trying to improve ourselves, when we are doing our wajibat, when we're trying to learn, when we're trying to um, just strengthen our soul, this is the manifestation of Ya Ali. So Ya Adim then, and um, in Ya Adim, I love this because we normally translate it as the great or the mighty, but in this translation, it used tremendousness or limitlessness. <clears throat> Um, yeah. And you found a really cool link to our salah, didn't you, Fatima? So, yeah. So, Adim is the, is the name of Allah that we recite so many times in a day um, when we are in Ruku. So, we say, Subhana Rabbi al Adim wa bihamdi. So, glory be to Allah, the tremendous, and we praise Him for that. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that when we're in Ruku, we're actually bowing down. And then in our dhikr, so physically we're bowed down, but in our zikr, we are remembering him as tremendous. So that's really, really, I think, very visual as well, that we're lowering ourselves and yet we are calling him tremendous. As a, as a yeah. to show our position according to his tremendousness. And the mm -hmm. same applies to A'la as well, actually, because once then we're down in sajda, mm -hmm. at the lowest place, we're, mm -hmm. you know, lowering this thing of ours, this head, the brain that we consider so much, you know, to be quite high and intelligent but we're placing it against the ground and at the same time invoking the most high while we are in that lowest of positions. And these two names actually were the first two names that Allah chose for himself. Yeah, that was very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Should we go on to the next two, which is Ya Ghafoor and Ya Rahim? Yes? Yes. So we can start off by saying that these two names are put together because um, forgiveness is a part of Allah's mercy. So it's actually something that's within the span of Allah's mercy. So when he's all forgiving, he's actually being merciful by being forgiven, which I thought was really interesting uh, that these two names are put together. And then the meaning of Ya Ghafoor, um, we came up with things like to conceal, to hide, to cover completely. Okay. And um, there was a really good narration actually that we found about um, a man goes to the sixth Imam and said, and the sixth Imam says to him that when somebody repents, Allah loves him and covers him. Mm -hmm. And so the man asks, what does it mean that Allah is covering him? And he said, so when he actually repents, the angels will stop recording that deed. They will erase that deed. But not only that, the body parts that were used to commit that um, sin and the earth or the place wherever he committed that sin will all be made to completely forget so that when the man arrives in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, there will be no witness, there will be no recollection, there will be no sign of that sin at all. And that suggests complete covering. Mm. And it was interesting how we can manifest that name here, can't we? Yeah. So if we want to try and be like a Ghafoor, mm. we also need to forgive completely. Mm. And there's a saying like forgive and forget. So when you actually forgive, just rub it out from your heart as well. But that's not easy to do necessarily. We always, we like to hang on to grudges. And then we also like to remind people like, oh, do you remember when you, you know, you didn't do this for me or you didn't do that? Or even mentioning in passing to someone else, like, you know, oh yeah, he did this. I've forgiven him. It's fine now. Uh, but even try not to do that. And when we, we are... We tend to think, we tend to think because it's gone away now, it's passed. It's yeah. okay now to bring it back up, but actually it's not okay no, at all. Not okay. And yeah. if you want to implement of a war, we need to go past it completely. Yeah. So looking at Ya Rahim then, mm -hmm. this is the all merciful. Mm -hmm. And we, I think, tend to know that with Rahman, you know, there's general beneficence, but with mm -hmm. Rahim, it's a very special kind of divine mercy that Allah sends us. And it's usually to do with things like our faith, guidance, 
perfection and paradise. Mm -hmm. What I really found interesting about Rahim is that it's available to everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not like Allah is choosing not to give it, let's say, to his disbelievers or the people who don't follow the faith, but they themselves are choosing to turn away. So I, I remember there's one example where in mosque on a busy day, my daughter was quite young then, and I had been talking to some people, and when I turned around, she was crying her eyes out, and she said, I, I couldn't see you. I was right there, but she had just turned away from me, so she could not see me. And I feel like sometimes that's what we're like with Allah, where He is always there, but we've just turned away, and so we don't get that divine mercy. Yeah. So it's not him being unfair by just giving it exclusively to the believers. It's yeah. the disbelievers who are choosing not to be able to receive that mercy. Yeah. yeah. And you had a rainwater analogy here as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I was thinking, you know, when we want to collect rainwater, depending on what kind of pot or cup we use, if we use a small plastic cup, we're just going to get a little bit of water. A cup with a hole is not going to fill much water at all. Mm -hmm. But if you have a nice big flower pot, then you are going to collect a lot of rainwater, aren't you? Yeah. So it's a bit like that and how, how receptive we are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, And you mentioned earlier that um, Allah's forgiveness is a manifestation of his mercy, which is why Ghafoor and Rahim are linked. Mm -hmm. Actually, what I love is that there's so much, the, in the forgiveness, there's so much mercy. So for example, not only does Allah cover our sins, mm -hmm. he actually protects us from the punishment that we oh, would yeah. get through those sins. And he protects us from the effects of our sins. So we know we shouldn't be doing sins because it has an effect on us. So it's not just about, you know, the guna or the punishment. So he protects us from the effects of those sins as well. But mm -hmm. not only that, he goes one step further and he changes those sins into good deeds. So it says in the, the Quran, in Surah 25, Ayah 70, mm -hmm. Allah will replace their misdeeds with good deeds. And no wonder we recite these in the month of Ramadan because it's a month of mercy and forgiveness so subhanallah just the depth of that 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 forgiveness the depth of we are food is just unimaginable yeah absolutely and we are supposed to be manifestations of that so really that yeah. is where we should be <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah moving on to anta rabbul azim mm. so oh. this we said this we said rub means um here it means someone who's cherishing someone who's nourishing someone who's continuously sustaining us mm -hmm. and then the fact that rub and rub and adim are together means that you know so tremendous cherisher the tremendousness of what he is doing and this encompasses everything we said not just human beings it is you know it is manifest in everything that he's sustaining all around us that is why he is rabbul adim yeah and mm -hmm. another translation also is given that he's the owner and manager Mm. And only Allah can be the owner and manager because he created us. So he knows exactly, you know, who, what he's created and what the creation needs. So only he can be providing it. But the amazing thing is that he's constantly providing it. It's not that he's created us and then left us. He is perpetually providing and taking care of us. Mm. And in contrast, we are perpetually in need of that, of our rub. So when I just think of this, I just feel a sense of gratefulness that Allah is constantly taking care of us and, and watching over us. Yeah, which is why we can never, ever be truly thankful to him because yeah. at every moment he's bestowing us with things, at every second, you know, we, are, we, we need to be grateful. Yeah. Yeah. So moving on to the last two names. Mm -hmm. um, I love personally, and those who know me know that I love this name. Wahuwa uh, Sami'u al-Basir. So as Sami'u, Mm. He's the all hearing. Mm. He is the one who hears and listens to everything. Mm. And imagine like we feel like we have this connection or on the, you know, when we're on the musalla and we're talking to Allah, we know that he's hearing us. But we are just one of yeah. billions. And yeah. that's just human beings. That there's all these creation out there that Allah is hearing and listening to all the time. It is. It's just mind boggling. Boggling. You know, we think we're exclusive, but we're not exclusive. Yeah. And I love the the reference in Dua Al Kama where um, we say, "Oh, who he is not confused by the many voices that call him." You know, there is no confusion. Everyone is individual to him, and he takes care of us individually with our needs. You know, it's not a one for all, one fits all kind of thing or anything like that. It's so individual. Yeah. yeah. And 
Um, if we want to try and practically implement mm -hmm. them, we need to ask ourselves, how good are we at listening? So recently, I don't know if you've joined Active Intazar, it's a movement to try and prepare for the 12th Imam. And there was a clip by Sheikh Bin Ketia who was talking about one of the ways that we can do this is to make sure we listen more. How quickly do we interrupt? And if we do interrupt other people, we're not really listening to them. So we need to recite the salawat and, and send that salawat for them. So in your life, to practically in, implement Yasami, or we need to listen more and talk less. Definitely, to just keep ourselves open. You know, we are so quick to want to jump in with our thoughts. Yeah. But actually, there is so much more benefit in listening. And that is when, you know, in Islam, the whole focus on silence and, you know, silence brings about wisdom. Yeah. That's where it all comes from. Yeah. Yeah. And the last name mm -hmm. is Ya Basir. So Basir is the, the all-seeing. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was on a walk with my nephew the other day and, you know, the leaves uh, are, are now growing back. And I asked him, you know, can you tell how many leaves this one tree has? And he said, no, there's too many. But there is an ayah in the Quran, uh, you know, in autumn when the leaves are falling, there is no way for us to even count like the tree, let's say, near our house. But Allah is the one who says that no leaf ever falls but that he knows it and that like you know he sees everything yeah yeah try it in autumn when we're crunching through the leaves think about each and every leaf that you crunch and allah knows about that leaf that fell down it's just it's, it's mind-boggling isn't it so yeah. then how do we practically implement ya basu in our life Fatimanti? so i think yeah basiru we need to be careful that we have eyesight and we have insight mm. and, and and the true the true vision i would say is to, is is insight and again that links in with with yasamir because when we listen that is when we will get true insight and true wisdom yeah. so i think that's the two names link really well there yeah. Yeah. yeah and we need to be conscious that because he is seeing us and hearing mm -hmm. us all the time we mm. need to behave accordingly yeah. right so he gave us the outer eye as well as the inner eye of the heart. So we need to use these faculties in a way that's pleasing to him as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah. that brings us to the end of the names of Allah uh, that we are re reading in these duas. Now there are a few more questions in the books, so do go through them in your own time to read about the rest of uh, Ya Ali, Ya Ali. And there is also a suggested activity where you can try your hand at Arabic calligraphy of these names. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a Kahoot quiz as well, where you can consolidate the knowledge from the game, from, from the learning today as well. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, yeah. Do share your artwork on our, uh, our social media handles, um, mm -hmm. tag Buzz Ideas. We would love to see them. Mm -hmm. so. That would be brilliant, yeah. Take care, everyone. Kadafis. Kadafis. <laughs>